can actually start making the paint is you have to prepare the surface in order to uh, create a surface that will have uh, allow the pigment to bind with the oil. And you can do that by just finding some silicon carbide. You can also buy this stuff, um, the glass that's already prepared online, but it's a lot cheaper to do it yourself. And so I'm using silicon carbide by Rublex and I'm just taking a surface, uh, a tool that has a flat uh, glass bottom and I'm using that as a molar. Uh, normally molars will cost like between 60 to 80 plus US dollars. But if you can find like a nice piece of glass that has a smooth bottom that's not convex or concaved at all, it is pretty much the same thing. Now it is so important to use the silicon carbide in order to prepare the surface because if it's not abrasive and it's just too smooth, then it won't actually mix the paint and it'll just be smearing it around. But by adding this abrasion, it gives the ability to homogenize this mixture of oil and pigment until it binds and it just becomes the oil paint that we'll be using. Now after the surface is evenly abrasive and it kind of the glass resembles a frosted appearance to it, we're ready to start actually making paint. Now this pigment that I decided to use for this demonstration is a stone called lazurite. And lazurite is often found near lapis lazuli but is not nearly as rare or valuable. But it still contains that blue appearance of lapis lazuli. It's slightly grayer in appearance and that's why it's often called ultramarine ash. After we've decided which pigment to make, the next question is which oil to use. Now, you might think that there's only one, that all oil paint contains the same oil, but there's actually a variety of different oils to choose from, and they all have unique characteristics to them. And I generally use cold pressed linseed oil for mixing most of my colors. However, there are some colors that it's just not a good idea to use that linseed oil. Walnut oil is uh, not quite as yellow as linseed oil, and so it's a very good uh, oil to use in the lighter colors that aren't yellow because it won't have the tendency to yellow the pigments over time. Um, so it's, it's more clear and it's also a slightly slower dryer than linseed oil. And so if you want a paint that you can come back to uh, for several days maybe and have it still workable, maybe lins or, uh, walnut oil would be a good choice. And then the last one I have with me right now is black oil. And black oil is kind of this weird potion type thing that um, this one was made with a walnut oil base, but then it was cooked basically in a lead container and uh, basically oxidized uh, with uh, heat. And so it, it's kind of this, this long process to make, but it's really good for the blacks to keep them vibrant and, and transparent so it doesn't build up as much. So this is a black oil that I probably wouldn't use mulling, mulling the paint, but I might incorporate it into a painting in the very darks. Now that we've decided which pigment to use and which oil to use, we can actually start making the paint now. And so I like to start by making a little hole in the center of my pile of pigments and adding some oil into that hole. And then I like to take the knife and start bringing it around the pile, incorporating it into the oil a little bit more. And as I'm doing this, uh, I'm trying to use less oil than I think I'm going to need because it's a lot easier to add more oil than if you already have a set amount of pigment that you're mixing and then you find that you need more pigment to compensate for the amount of oil you add. And so it's just easier to underdo it with the oil uh, because it's often misunderstood that what causes oil painting to not uh, survive over time, to deteriorate, is not the way it was, well, it is the way it was stored, but a big factor of it is also the amount of oil content that it has in the painting. And believe it or not, in oil painting, it's the oil that deteriorates the painting. And so the least amount of oil that we can use to get all these particles of the, the pigment completely homogenous is the golden ratio of what we're going for. And because each pigment is made from a different material, a different element, uh, in a different way, the particles that it contains are different sizes. And so the surface area is different and the amount of oil you actually need to cover it all is different. And so it takes, you can, you can find out some of these charts online that takes a lot of the basic oil colors and breaks them down by the amount of volume uh, of oil that you need in order to get every one of those pigment particles covered in oil. Now my method for this pigment is I'm just gonna be adding a little bit of oil incrementally and getting it to be as mixed as much as possible. And then when I get to mulling it, I'm just going to mull it an excessive amount. And so I know that the oil is around all the particles. And with some paints, you can even let it sit overnight and then you might find that uh, it becomes more liquidy and you can actually add more pigment into it without adding more oil. 
as uh, it sets, the, the oil uh, becomes more evenly distributed. And now for this last little part, I'm just getting it all into a pile and trying to get rid of uh, the most amount of just that dry pigment that's left. And so it's kind of in this like cakey, uh, this cakey muddy form right now. And once we get it into that stage, we're ready to start mulling. I start mulling by holding the molar directly over the pile of paint and pressing down, going around in circular and figure eight motions to further dispense the oil into the pigment. When I'm starting to mold, the paint is very thick and it doesn't give very much. It's hard and requires a lot of pressure in order to uh, distribute and push the paint around. But as I get further along and mull it more and more, it's going to become more smooth and velvety. And that's going to be an indication that it's getting closer to being done. This part of the process is really satisfying, and it just takes some time to really start loosening up the paint. And once the paint starts building up on the actual molar, I take my palette knife and I just turn it over and scrape off some of it and take the rest of the paint and move it back into the center of the pile where I can continue mulling it. It's at this point that I begin to feel the paint changing uh, into a more smoother texture, and I can adapt to this. If it's too oily, I can add some more pigment, and if it's too dry and cakey still, I can add a little bit more oil to balance it out. There are all sorts of things you can add into the paint when you're making it yourself, such as beeswax, uh, different oils and mediums and copals and different varnishes and stuff like that. Uh, I haven't had any experience with that. I've just used plain linseed oil for the most part and occasionally the walnut oil if I'm using a lighter color. Um, I, sometimes I think simple is better, but if you want to experiment, you can explore these different ways and different things to add into the paint. If you do decide to let the paint rest overnight so you can incorporate more pigment into it, if it will allow it, uh, I would recommend putting it in a closed container and you can buy clove oil. And clove oil, you just put a drop or two on a cotton ball and keep it in that closed container with the paint. And it will actually stop it from forming a film layer over on top the next day. And so you can use the entire paint and you don't have to worry about any of it drying while you're letting it rest. I'm happy with how the consistency of the paint is. And so now I'm ready to start tubing it. And so I use my same palette knife. Preferably I would use a smaller one if I had one easily acceptable. Um, just so it fit in the tube better. But I begin to just scrape it off the pallet and into the tube. And I tap the tube down to make sure that there's no air bubbles that get trapped in. So the paint sits directly on top of, of the, the rest of the paint and doesn't form any bubbles that would uh, could cause it to dry or strange thing happening um, when, when we actually close the tube. And so I'm just keeping the paint on the end of the pallet knife and scraping it on the bottom and just continuing tapping until I fill up the, the entire tube. I do try to keep a little less than a centimeter, but around that uh, on the top empty so I can crimp it. I don't have to worry about the paint spilling over. Now the lazarite is not a toxic material, but if you were doing this with lead white or lead tin yellow or cinnabar or any other pigment that could be toxic, I would highly recommend wearing gloves. Now I'm just scraping off the last of it, putting it in the tube and making sure it's really tapped down and then we're ready to crimp it shut. Now I like to use a paper towel and just kind of push it close together and so there's no air that's trapped in the tube and a little bit of the extra uh, pigment that is, or paint that's coming out, I can just wipe off and so it keeps it nice and clean. And then after that, I can grab the stretcher bars, uh, stretcher bar pliers and crimp that shut. And I like to do at least three times around in crimping that shut just to keep it a nice clean seal that the paint won't eke out if I squeeze it to get the paint coming out of the tube from the other end. And then after it's crimped, you're done, you're good to go. The last step I do is I just, I make sure that I label it so I know exactly what the pigment is. In addition to the actual name, I also like to put the manufacturer or where I bought the pigment and also what oil I'm using. And so 
I make sure I have some form of an abbreviation or symbol that lets me know exactly what's in this paint. So I know if something's wrong with it or if I want to replicate it, I just know exactly what it is. I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions or comments or even ideas or thoughts that you think would be a really cool future video, please let me know in the comments. And as always, be sure to subscribe. Thank you so much.